So this question, 1979, um, AP Physics B, from the top of a cliff, um, the height is given 80 meters, a ball of mass 0 0.5, 0 0.4 kilogram is launched horizontally with a velocity of 30 meters per second at the time of the start, T0 as shown above. The potential energy of the ball is zero at the bottom of the cliff. Um, assume that the acceleration due to gravity is 10 meters per second squared. So if this is our cliff and if we say this is how the ball is going to be flying, um, let's look at A. Calculate the potential kinetic and total energies of the ball um, at the time t equals zero. So the potential energy is equal to um, m, I'm not going to call it initial for now, mgh. So it's 0 0.4 times 10 times h, and the potential energy um, is equal to, if I plug in the numbers, I have um, 320 joules. Then, so that's potential energy at the beginning, at the point. Um, then we have, we found potential energy, the kinetic energy. Kinetic energy initial is equal to um, one half mv squared and the initial velocity squared that is given 30 meters per second. So if I plug in the numbers, I will get um, 0.4 times 30 squared, which gives me 180 joules. Mechanical energy is the total energy of the object. So the mechanical energy is the potential and kinetic energy together. So that is kinetic initial plus potential initial. Um, and that together added will give me total mechanical energy to start with is 500 joules. And I don't want to call it um, initial here because mechanical energy is the total energy of the system and the closed system if the no, um, forces or matter enters the system mechanical energy of the system does not change so the mechanical energy is going to stay the same 500 joules um, for the next part for b so those were the answers for a for the b part on the axis below, sketch and label graphs of the potential kinetic and total energies of the object, of the ball, as function of the distance over time. So at first, before I start solving this one, I want to find the final velocity right here. So the final velocity, vertical, initial horizontal doesn't change, so it's going to stay 30 meters per second no matter where I look at it, right? It's 30 meters per second. Horizontal, it doesn't change. Vertical is the square root of 2 gh, did that formula, and that will give me 40 meters per second. So if this is 40 meters per second, uh, the time is going to hit the ground or before it falls on the ground is four seconds that's the change of the velocity over the acceleration formula so to find the time you divide the change of the velocity initial vertical velocity is zero horizontal is 30 but the initial vertical velocity is zero and the final vertical velocity is um, 40 so the change of the velocity is 40 and acceleration due to gravity is 10 so that gives me four seconds so that means the object hits the ground um, in four seconds. It will travel the distance. So the distance, this distance the object travels before it hits the ground. Um, velocity is 30 meters per second and it travels for 40 seconds. So at the time the object is 120 meters away, the object should land. So at the time the object is 120 meters away. So it will fall 120 meters away horizontal distance. But in our problem, it's not the horizontal distance, it's the vertical distance. So this is the top of the clip when the zero distance is falling down from the top of the clip. And this one is um, the bottom of the clip, 80 meters. 
So at 80 meters, your potential energy is going to be equal to zero. Let me change the colors. So I'm going to say potential energy is going to be um, brown. So the potential energy all the way at the bottom is going to be equal to zero. And the potential energy to start with, the potential energy to start with is 320 joules. So I'm going to take 320 joules and place my graph down. So this is my potential energy. Make it nicer. So that is my potential energy. My kinetic energy. Um, so this is potential initial energy, which is 320, and this is potential final energy. Um, my kinetic energy, so let's choose different color for kinetic energy. Maybe orange. Okay. The kinetic energy um, starts with 180 joules. The kinetic energy starts with 180 joules. And at the end, it gains the potential energy because potential energy is equal to zero at the end. So the total energy at the end is equal to the mechanical energy. So the kinetic energy at the end is going to be the mechanical energy as well. And let's write what mechanical energy is equal to. So the total energy or the mechanical energy is this part. And the mechanical energy is going to stay 500 joules, no matter where you look at it. So all the way till here, till you have 80 meters, your mechanical energy does not change. So all the way till right here, your mechanical energy is going to stay the same. So if you take kinetic energy, it starts at 180, and then it goes all the way to 500 joules at the end. This part is going to be your kinetic energy. And just not to be marked wrong, I want to make sure that my kinetic energy goes all the way to the to the total energy, mechanical energy, and your mechanical energy formula or calculations. Five hundred joules. Um so for C um, I will have to use the time it's given to um, to figure out my graphs. So the time we said it's four seconds because the change of the velocity of acceleration gives me the time. Initial vertical velocity is zero. Final vertical velocity. Final vertical velocity is forty meters per second. So the change of the velocity is forty, and the time in acceleration is ten. So that gives me four seconds. So in four seconds, an object is going to land. So going to the next graph. So in four seconds, the object is going to land. So that means um, that again, my mechanical energy is going to stay 500. That part doesn't change. And at four seconds, your kinetic energy, so kinetic energy is going to start from 180. Your potential energy is going to start from 320. At some point, your potential energy is going to be equal to the kinetic energy. So an object has potential energy. Let me do the graph, the drawing right here. So you have the bowl. Your kinetic energy here is 180 joules. Your potential energy right here is 320 joules. The total energy is 500 joules. So the object is going to be falling down all the way here. And your, so this one is 30 meters per second. Your vertical velocity initial is zero, and then 
does change because there is acceleration and the height is 8 meters, right? 80 meters. Um, so to find vertical velocity when it hits the ground, I have the vertical velocity is equal to the square root of 2gh. So the vertical velocity is equal to 2, 10, 80. The vertical velocity is equal to 40 meters per second. Because acceleration is equal to change of the velocity over the time, your time is equal to change of the velocity over acceleration. So the time to fall down is 40 vertical, initial was 0, and acceleration is 10, so that gives me 4 seconds. So that's how I know it's going to land in 4 seconds. Then, um, at some point, your potential energy is going to be... So, the total energy here is 500 joules. You're going to have potential and kinetic energy equal to each other. So, if the potential energy is equal to the kinetic energy, both of them have to be 100, 250 joules. 250 joules. Um, so I need to figure out at what point will these graphs meet? How long will it take before these two graphs meet? So I can predict what my graph is going to look like. So the potential energy needs to lose 70 joules to kinetic energy for potential energy to be 250 and the kinetic energy to be 250. So the potential energy, the change of the potential energy needs to be 70 joules, right? 70 joules. When two objects meet, or two, when two energies meet. Um, so in order for energy to lose, in order for the potential energy to lose 70 joules, UMGH must be 70 joules. So the mass is given, um, the mass is given 0 0.4 kilogram times g is 4 h and equals to 70. So, so h is given 70 over 4 or 35 over 2. So that's 17.5 meters. So I know when an object falls down 17.5 meters, potential energy is going to be equal to kinetic energy. But how long will it take? So the time, I can find the final velocity, vertical velocity. So I can find vertical velocity when it falls down 17.5 meters. Again, it's the Duff formula. It's 2gh. So the velocity when the object falls down um, 17.5 meters with the initial vertical velocity is zero and otherwise you would have to plug in vertical initial velocity into the formula um, but if it is zero we have 2gh then we have the square root of 2 g and h so the velocity is equal to 350 The square root of velocity is 350. I need to go right there. So that number is equal to 18.7 meters per second. So when the vertical velocity is 18.7 meters per second, um, it will be falling down for 1.87 seconds. So at 187 seconds after the object starts falling down, the objects um, will the object will have the same kinetic and potential energy. So for at 1.87, oh, it's almost two. So sometime at this time, the kinetic and potential energy is going to be equal to each other, and um, it's going to happen at 250 joules. So both of them will have 250 joules. So if I go back here, my potential energy has to come through this point and down. 
and my kinetic energy has to come through that point and up. So this will be your kinetic energy and this will be your potential energy.